Ayan, isang makasaysayang araw sa inyong lahat. So I'll speak uh, somewhat informally so that uh, to reduce the tension or the or to make this lecture more engaging. Okay, so let me share my screen. All right. So this lecture was originally planned for last year and was originally um, it was originally designed for history majors in here in the Ateneo. But right now, since the history lecture series uh, of the department has been made uh, available to the general public in this part for this particular lecture, uh, I will that I would like to dedicate this lecture for all the young historians who would want to explore the field of heritage conservation here in the Philippines, as well as other aspiring historians, other local historians, and even teachers of social science and history in uh, amongst uh, you, the viewers. So our today's lecture would be Windows to the Past, Mirrors of Identity, History, Heritage, and Conservation Practice in the Philippines. So what are the uh, objectives of this lecture for today. So first, we will be providing, uh, or I, this lecture would intend to provide an overview of what is cultural heritage and its relationship with the discipline of history. And second, uh, we shall try to learn how the discipline of history contributes to the practice of built heritage conservation and management. And third, um, also aside from being a historian, I'm a scholar of public policy. So of course, let us try to understand the current situation of the, of the practice of heritage management and even heritage policy and conservation here in the Philippines. So these are the objectives of the lecture today. Okay, so first let us understand what is heritage or in Filipino, we call it pamana. So heritage is defined by the UNESCO or by the United Nations as legacies from the past that we live with today and what we individually and collectively pass on to future generations. So meaning um, heritage are objects or things, uh, both tangible and intangible, which were created or which were created in the past and we uh, inherited and would also uh, inherit in or which we will pass on to the next generation. So the Filipino term for heritage, we have uh, two, which is closely related to the, uh, to the definition, which is pamana and uh, subli in Visaya. So pag sinabi natin pamana, ito yung isang bagay na galing sa mga nauna sa atin at minana natin at later on ipapamana natin sa ating mga anak at sa ating mga apo. And when it comes to the concept of subli, Kumbaga, hindi natin ito pagmamayari, kundi tayo lamang ay uh, caretakers or tayo lamang ay nangangalaga sa, sa mga subli o sa ating mga pamana na ipapasa natin sa mga susunod na henerasyon. So ito yung konsepto ng heritage or pamana. Okay, so pag sinabi natin or pagdating sa field ng heritage conservation or heritage studies, uh, we, can, we can see that the field is one, it's interdisciplinary. It would include a lot of disciplines, both in the humanities and as well as in the sciences. So here in the field of heritage conservation, you will experience uh, working with scientists, uh, primarily also with architects, artists, um, other cultural workers, anthropologists, and even chemists when it comes to this field. So it's highly interdisciplinary. And when we look later Doon sa what constitutes cultural heritage, uh, you can see that the field of cultural heritage is quite uh, large in scope. Also, uh, the field of heritage conservation is also concerned with development or it is developmental. So it has uh, real life or social and political um, outcomes and consequences when you deal with heritage. Kasi hindi lamang ito about um, it's not just about old buildings and how to manage them but, or how to preserve them, but also how these things could be preserved or why should we be preserving it and what benefit can they bring to society in general or to a particular community. So heritage could bring uh, development, it could bring opportunities to many, um, to many people, particularly where the, where the heritage is located or the community wherein the heritage is located. And also, being 
interdisciplinary and having developmental consequences or concerns, it is also connected to different uh, societal issues and problems like um, governance as well as transparency and even how to democratize uh, heritage. So these are just a general overview of what to expect when you are entering the field of heritage conservation and management. Okay, so when we talk about heritage, we usually have the distinction of having natural and cultural. So when you say natural heritage, this constitutes the natural um, patrimony or, or objects that were created or things that existed in nature or created by millions of years through ge geological forces. So the natural heritage, for example, here in the Philippines would include um, forests, um, the rivers, the coral reefs, and even um, mangrove areas, beaches, etc. So uh, the entire natural wealth of the Philippines constitutes what we have as natural heritage. So, but the focus that we have right now it would be on cultural heritage. And the United Nations would define a cultural heritage or would list down the different kinds of cultural heritage as among these. It would include cultural heritage sites, historic cities, cultural landscapes, sacred sites, uh, things that can be found underwater like wreckage and uh, sunken artifacts, uh, museums or spaces where these artifacts are displayed, as well as movable or tangible cultural heritage, also handicrafts, both the physical handicraft as well as techniques on how they are created, uh, documentary and digital heritage, um, cinematog cinematographic heritage, which includes movies and other films, as well as oral traditions like our epics, uh, different languages, the festive events, rites and beliefs, music and song, the performing arts, traditional medicine, literature, culinary traditions, and traditional sports and games. So the United Nations or in this list, we can see that the what constitutes cultural heritage is so large, so broad. So there is something for everybody when it comes to if you are planning to enter into this field. Okay, so in when it comes to cultural heritage, we generally um, divide it or categorize it between intangible, which would, in, which would be not tangible, not physical objects. And also we have tangible cultural heritage, which would include artifacts, works of art, built heritage, works of national, national artists, etc. Okay. But we have to remember that this, these distinctions between heritage are oftentimes blurred. So let me give an example. So when we talk about um, the indigenous Filipinos or our indigenous uh, communities living in their ancestral lands, is, it is both concerning cultural heritage and natural heritage, where in their ancestral lands, um, their ancestral lands have cultural value, even though they are natural, um, natural formations by themselves. They have a cultural value for the indigenous communities that are located in the in that particular heritage zone. So we call that uh, cultural landscapes, and it is uh, it is it just shows that how you cannot fully categorize or you cannot really separate heritage from its different um, aspects or different forms. So we have to just be careful in distinguishing these kinds of heritage. So now, what is the relationship between heritage and the discipline of history? So when we, I made a, so we can see here the parallelism between the fields of heritage and as well as history. So when we talk about heritage, they are legacies from the past. But when we talk about history, we are dealing with accounts from the past. So heritage deals with the tangible and intangible products of human expression and achievements. And as well as, and we have history wherein history deals with past events, including their circumstances and outcomes. Heritage discusses significance and history 
discusses narratives. So these are some uh, parallelism, some of uh, my observations as a scholar of heritage as well as a uh, historian. Okay, so but both history and heritage deal with the past okay, as the human experience. And of course, when we talk about culture, uh, culture, one definition of culture would be um, the product of man's reaction to his or her environment. So heritage and history also deals with how people interact with their environment, both physical as well as the political, the environmental, social environment or context that we live in. Then also history and heritage also deal with identity. So what makes a Filipino, what makes you part of a particular or what makes you part of a community, it is determined by both the story of your family, of your people, of our nation, and also the cultural wealth as well as the or as well as the cultural wealth that our nation or our country has. So both history and heritage show a dimension of our identity as a group of a particular um, ethnic group or ethnolinguistic group or a part of a greater nation, okay, which is the Philippines. Okay. Also, uh, heritage and history have the dimensions of being affected or being, or we can um, being affected or can be looked in a way we're in. Uh, it's both natural and cultural. It's affected or manifested in political, economic, social, cultural, and military and focus, and would also include contested significance and narratives which are critical, contested, or dark, as well as difficult. And so, ito yung what is the relationship between history and heritage? So, that's the... Okay. So, legacies and accounts, we deal with narratives as historians, but here we also deal with material and intangible objects of the past, or heritage deals with both tangible and intangible products. Okay, so these are just parallelism. So as you can see, the relationship between uh, heritage and history is quite uh, related. Right, so right now, let's enter what is heritage conservation as a field or as a practice? Okay, so um, one definition of conservation or heritage conservation would be concerned with the transmission of cultural heritage with its significant values intact and accessible to the greatest degree possible. So the objective of heritage conservation is to conserve, meaning this would include the protection, the development, as well as making sure that a particular heritage asset or a particular heritage, uh, particular heritage object, tangible or intangible, would retain its significant or important values and make it accessible to the people or Okay, when it comes to public uh, heritage. Another definition would be the conservation means all the process of looking after a place or a heritage so as to retain its cultural significance. Okay, this is from the ECOMOS. Okay, what else? Um, heritage conservation are all the efforts designed to understand cultural heritage, know its history and meaning, and ensure its material safeguard and its required and as required, its presentation, restoration, and enhancement. So uh, the practice of heritage conservation uh, would include different activities or different tasks from trying to understand, meaning doing research and interpretation uh, of history and analysis of culture or the context where it is located in, as well as how would you present the heritage Okay, so that is something that is contest that would be contested, as we will see later. Okay, and how would you restore a particular heritage? And this would include the hard sciences like chemistry, etc., as well as how do you enhance a particular heritage asset so as to ensure that it will survive for future uh, for the future generations. So 
using so my experience when it comes to heritage conservation was focused on built heritage and this is something that i would like to focus for this particular lecture as this is also one of the most public or who has the most public cases in the recent years um so later we will see some case studies that would deal with built heritage and the focus of built heritage is or built heritage are uh they are tangible meaning they are physical manifestations of our culture and they are deemed immovable or they should be not moved because these particular built heritage exist within a context okay so what constitutes built heritage that we have here in the philippines so there are different kinds which would include residential that would have uh, the ancestral houses ecclesiastical the old churches or uh, areas of worship places of worship you have civic which includes uh, parks the plazas then we have uh, infrastructure old bridges and as well as identify other identified heritage structures for example works or buildings designed by uh, the prime or the most notable Filipino architects as well as works of national artists. Okay. So there, as or in my experience as a historian involved in heritage conservation, my practice in, goes around uh, built heritage. Yeah. So how do we conserve built heritage? So these are basically the steps. If you are planning, if you, for example, if you have a house uh, that is that you have an ancestral house, the care of your family, and you intend to conserve it properly, these are basically the steps of how to conserve built heritage. First is documentation, and then you do research. So documentation would include the physical measuring, the picture, the pictorial documentation, the, you do the measurements and the drawings. Then you would also do research or about the history and the context of a particular built heritage site. And then next is that after studying the importance of this uh, location or of this site, then we should decide or we should determine which conservation process or intervention should be undergone. So the important document that we have here would be what is called the cultural or the, or the CMP. Okay, or the cultural management plan. Okay. Then next, we have the implementation of the said plan and then the interpretation. Okay, how would you present this uh, heritage? What story, what narrative should it tell for the visitors or for the community that uh, takes care of it? And then, of course, you have to maintain. You have to allocate resources and manpower to, or manpower to, maintain a particular built heritage okay. so where does the discipline or where does the historian go in the process of heritage conservation so the historian's task in heritage conservation constitutes or would take part in these two um, activities one is that the historian is involved in the documentation of changes okay so this would include the changes when it comes to physical or the renovations of the said built heritage. So the history of um, how many versions does a particular building have? Okay. So when was the last renovation? What were the things changed within a said building? Okay. Next is what changed when it comes to utilization? Okay. Or how was the building or how was the built heritage used? Also, the historian is tasked with studying the change when it comes to the context or the environment, both the cultural, and uh, environmental, um, economic, and cultural landscapes where the heritage site exists, as well as what events happened in that particular um, heritage site. Also, uh, the historian is also would also be involved in documenting what or how do people remember that particular place or the memory of the said place. 
among others. So the first one is that we document the changes of that the particular heritage structure underwent. And the second would involve how should the heritage okay, or be interpreted when it comes to significance. So how do we interpret a heritage site's significance? So in heritage practice, the significance could be defined among these four um, levels or four classes, which is architectural, historical, social, and scientific. Okay, so the architectural and scientific uh, significance would be more uh, technical, but for the historian or for the for the one who is involved in historical research, okay, uh, the historian would play a key role in interpreting the significance when it comes to historical events, as well as the social um, fabric where the heritage site exists. Okay. So what would be the sources that are usable in doing these kinds of research? So one of the most common challenge when, it, when doing this in a, in a, if you are part of a team of heritage, of, of, in a heritage conservation team, you would be working with different people with different uh, backgrounds or different disciplines. And uh, there, we, we should not be working in a way na ginagamit natin yung technical jargons that we have. So it should be uh, the way that we present the history of a place is that it is uh, palatable to the, and understandable to people with different disciplines. So it's a challenge of communication skill initially. And also, there is a challenge of trying to understand as well the different terms that they have. So hindi pwedeng sabihin na that a roof is a roof. So you should be able to identify for example, the different parts of a church, the different parts of a fortification, etc. So with that, what kind of documents or sources would be usable uh, when it comes to doing research about the changes in a particular heritage site? So of course, you have documents like old plans and blueprints. Um, you would also include admin records or, for example, in for old churches, we have what is called the cargo idata or um, these are like documents of what the parish uh, purchase in a particular year or in a particular time. So this is where, for example, you will get what kind of wood was used for a particular retablo or a particular altar. So the cargo idata gives that kind of technical data for, for that the historian can get and show to the conservation team. Okay. So also we would have travelogues and memoirs of old travelers, okay, as well as maps and geographic surveys, and if existing old brochures of a particular heritage structure or site. Then also uh, it would one of the most important sources, old photographs of a particular built heritage. So we're in you have to analyze um, what are the designs. You have to look into uh, a photo can give you an idea of what is the material of a part of a particular part of that said structure. And also, uh, what is also usable starting on the um, starting in the twentieth century would be video footage and films. So one example here is that. Um, when we are doing, for example, a, okay, um, I was involved in a project wherein uh, we are documenting the old uh, carcel or the old prison in Cebu. So we have no idea how the old, ano yung itsura ng loob ng kulungan. So because nobody originally takes pictures of how, of how a jail looks like inside. So an interesting find would be that for example that particular prison was used as a as a as a movie shooting spot for a for an old movie called the Alegagang movie so okay so doon makikita na anong itsura ng loob ng kulungan so this uh, you can find actually good footage in over youtube and in 
old films. Okay, as well, uh, an, another important, to fill in the gap of where there are no documents, we utilize uh, oral history. And then, of course, there are already some published uh, books as well as published research. You can go to secondary sources. And of course, something that is important, um, the availab if available, local historical materials. Okay. So these are the important sources that a historian should find when taking part in a conservation uh, project. Okay. Okay. So the conser or, sorry, the conservation management plan okay, is an important document when you are trying to conserve a particular um, heritage site or a heritage structure. So it is a document which sets out it sets out what is significant about the place and consequently what policies are appropriate which enable that significance to be retained in its future use and development. Okay, so this plan, the CMP, is the document that will guide what kind of intervention and why is this structure relevant. So you have the parts of a CMP like which include the evidence of significance, the historical summary, the analysis of significance, and statement of cultural significance. So for the historian, uh, we would be involved in the first, um, in the first five, okay, from the evidence up to identifying the constraints, issues, as well as opportunities of how to utilize a site. And of course, um, part of the plan would be the policy of conservation, what kind of you should be used only, okay, ano yung mga bawal, ano yung mga pwedeng gawin, and as well as how would you present a particular, or how would you interpret a particular heritage structure, and then of course, in last, would include the policy, implementation, and the strategy. Okay, so this is, these are the parts of a CMP. Okay, so in doing a, any conservation project, this is an important uh, document. Okay, so let's now go to what is this significance and why is this quite difficult when it comes to heritage conservation and how can a historian uh, help in identifying this significance of heritage? Okay, so the hierarchy of significance for built heritage would be architectural, historical, social, and scientific. So architectural would include what are the architectural elements in a particular built heritage. And then historical would be what did the what role did the building play in a particular um, historical event. Okay, as and when it comes to social, what uh, what role did the building play in a particular group of people? So for example, if it is a sports venue then its social value is that it is a sports, uh, it is a place for physical activity, it's a place for uh, sports. Okay, then of course, uh, the last higher part of the significance, if, if that particular building has scientific value wherein a particular technology or technique was utilized in the construction of the said built heritage. Okay, so Okay, when it comes to significance, okay, this is something that the, we historians are quite um, familiar with. It is with the context or with the concept of contested heritage because a particular heritage means different things to different people or different groups of people. And the usual points of contention would include ethnic, <clears throat> ethnic or indigenous uh, lines okay it would it could be religious um, divides it could be colonial and racial history and as well as national um, national stories or narratives so we can see here because heritage or the interpretation of a particular heritage is contested it means that heritage is actually also a political uh, is something that is political because okay you have different people having different interpretations and meaning for a particular heritage. Okay, so that's why uh, there would be conflicting discourses and some of the heritage uh, classifications of heritage that deals 
with these conflicting discourses and contested discourses would include the fields of post-colonial heritage, post-conflict heritage. Uh, we also have the term difficult heritage, heritage of the margins, okay? so something related to history, silences, okay? and heritage of the invisible, as well as critical heritage and dark heritage or heritage involving uh, tragedy, tragic events like genocide, um, large accidents, or large-scale tragedies. Okay. So the historian would have a would be highly involved when it comes to discussing what does a particular heritage site mean. Okay. So dito papasok yung ating yung ating pagtatasa. Ano nga bang ibig sabihin nito? Okay, based doon sa history na pinagdaanan ng particular heritage na meron. Okay. So that's the second part. Okay. For the last part of how is heritage conservation practice in or what are the challenges when it comes to heritage conservation practice in the Philippines? So let us understand the context of the heritage conservation practice here in the country. So of course, uh, uh, when we are talking about um, built landscapes, built heritage, there are usually threats to uh, to it, which would include war and conflict, natural and man-made disasters, degradation and neglect of a particular heritage structure, as well as the danger of demolition or improper renovation, as well as unsustainable tourism and rapid urbanization. So in this picture, um, uh, wherein you will see a particular heritage structure that we call the we call the high ally building. So it is an Art Deco building directly just across the Rizal Park, and it's one of the few, or used to be few, remaining Art Deco uh, structures found in Manila during that time. Unfortunately, it was demolished in two, in the year two thousand to give way to a planned Hall of Justice for the city of Manila, which unfortunately was never constructed. So uh, this particular event um, in, in the issue of heritage in the Philippines actually started a movement for heritage conservation advocates to push for more protection of our heritage sites. So after several years of um, lobbying, and promoting awareness, uh, the product of this said um, campaign or movement was the creation of the Heritage Law or the Republic Act 10066. Okay, but before that, let us understand that heritage, aside from a scientific, a historical, or interpretation matter, um, it is also a matter of public interest. Okay, meaning that it should be given importance in public programs or government programs as well as it should be wherein we the public should be involved and concerned about our heritage structures. So it is a matter of public interest because one it is part of our patrimony so another word for heritage and this is quite uh, this is mentioned in, a, in the preamble of our constitution. So meaning conservation heritage is constitutional as well as our legal duty. Okay. Also, it is a matter of public interest because it is tied with local and national development. Okay. So meaning, uh, heritage can provide um, avenues for livelihood which would contribute to both the local and national development. And as well, it is a matter of public interest because it concerns the people. So, it concerns groups of people because heritage is our is part of our identity. It's part of our uh, expression, identity as a people. Uh, this would also include the indigenous Filipinos. Um, heritage is also considered a matter of human rights because it's part of our human it's part of our identity. So that's why uh, deliberate destruction of heritage is considered a war crime in international conflicts. So, because heritage is a part of us, it concerns us. Okay, so 
the law which was passed uh, several years after the demolition of the High Alive Building was Republic Act 10066. And this is the main legislation that we have, aside from the mandates na meron for the different cultural agencies, the Republic Act 10066 or the National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009 uh, provided this or can be summarized into these four points. So the law intends uh, or it has provided a definition and presumption of what is considered important cultural property, both tangible and intangible. Okay. Also, it created what is called the Philippine Registry of Cultural Property, wherein the law requires that the nation or we should be putting tabs or we should be listing down the important heritage that we have, both tangible and intangible. So the list, the registries should be national as well as local. So both the national government agencies and then the local governments should have their existing uh, cultural registries and of course accessible to the public. And it also intend, intended to strengthen linkages among national cultural agencies and opens avenues for economic incentives, um, cultural education, as well as to incentivize and professionalize cultural work. So here, uh, the issues surrounding heritage conservation in the Philippines is have effectualization about by the local government code. So this is partly a history of what, how. This part of the history wherein what are the challenges that, or what, what are the causes of the challenges of heritage conservation here in the Philippines. So one, there is a challenge brought about by the decentralization of authority as well as um, local government participation and even leadership and conservation efforts is much needed okay? because usually uh, the ones depicted as the bad guys, mga kontrabida sa heritage conservation stories would include the local government. And of course, uh, there is a need for uh, principles and policy to guide the community for the protection and utilization. So there should be what you call ordinances, and these ordinances should always be updated. Right. So let's just go over just a few case studies for these issues on heritage conservation in the Philippines. So for in the previous or in the last decade, we have seen uh, different heritage structure structures or heritage assets in the news wherein it is demolished or improperly renovated like for example the church bell tower that became uh, naging parang cake and so we will see some cases that were somewhat uh which tested the the the, uh, the practice of heritage conservation and management as well as challenges or some cases that prove challenging to the current heritage uh, policies that we have. Okay, so the first one would be the challenge of uh, why for so long local governments don't have their own uh, cultural registries. So as the, cult as the, for example, as the, the heritage requires, all local governments should have a cultural registry by the year 2013. But unfortunately, only um, a portion of the current number of LGUs have these said registries in place. So in analyzing the problems when it comes to this lack in policy, we can see that um, the, originally the national government agency planned to penalize. Okay, so parusahan yung mga uh, local government units na hindi makapagpasa ng inventory. But the problem is or was hindi alam ng local governments how to do these cultural registries, which, in, which would include highly technical uh, skills of conducting, for example, cultural mapping. Ayan. So we see that um, we see that there is a lack of capacity for LGUs to create an in inventory because there is a lack of technical know-how how to conduct 
uh, cultural mapping. Also, LGUs don't prioritize uh, making this cultural there uh, are more pressing problems like peace and security, disaster response. So okay, I think culture usually takes a backseat when it comes to local governance. So why is it not, not a priority? Because there was no incentives to create local registries as well as there is a lack of awareness, not just amongst community, but also for local leaders in the communities. Then as well, uh, the, NC, the national cultural agencies could provide technical assistance, but their capacity to provide that is quite limited. So because there are no registries in LGUs, there are lost opportunities for local development as well as lost potential income. And of course, the always the danger of cultural property being damaged or lost through uh, demolition. Okay, so then we also have the case of vegan, which is dubbed like a success story because uh, this started in the 1990s wherein vegan was uh, I think a fourth class municipality, a low income municipality. But uh, when the heritage advocates came in, the professionals came in and with the community and the local government, they worked together um, to create a plan of how to conserve the old ancestral houses, um, then we know that vegan is one of our top tourist destinations before the pandemic. So we have here the strong local policies of conservation as well as incentivized cultural property owners and active tourism promotions led to what is vegan that we know today. But of course, uh, according to some of the interviews that I conducted, uh, it was not always smooth sailing between the local government and the community or the cultural property owners. So uh, uh, since in the previous years, I think there were some concerns of the community which are not yet addressed by the local government. So uh, we have here a story, but are still ongoing heritage governance. So the uh, most notable cases would be the Torre de Manila case, which is, of course, uh, you know, the photobomber issue behind the Rizal Park. Um, it was the campaign against the Torre, to, the Torre for it to be demolished or not to be allowed to be constructed was a civil society-backed movement. And it became the first major test of the heritage law and it was a legal battle as well as a public awareness campaign so we have here the interpretation of heritage or the discourse wherein heritage is pitted against development if your concept or if your idea of development are high-rise buildings then uh, heritage would be disregarded particularly built heritage so we had here we experienced here an unsupportive lgu and during the course of the, of the hearings, the national cultural agencies made different stands on the issue, particularly on how they interpreted the vista or the background of the Luneta, of the Rizal Monument. And so in the end, what did the Supreme Court uh, rule in the Torre de Manila case? So it was LGU autonomy was upheld during the deliberations of the Torre de Manila. So this case, as the first case of the, of the heritage law, uh, we saw here that the local governments have the final say and the most important say when it comes to actual conservation policies in a particular locality. So it's always the LGU autonomy as well as the community's engagement with this authority. Okay, so we, we see here that there is always conflicting interest. Okay, so aside from conflicting narratives and conflicting, um, conflicting interpretations of heritage, we also have in the field of conservation, conflicting interests. And, these dif and because we have different stakeholders, there are different interpretations and interests in cultural heritage. And this conflict stems from the differences of interpretation as well as the heritage, as well as differences in what 
do they want with a particular heritage uh, site or structure? Okay. Right. So, and then uh, last would be the pre-pandemic state of the district or the zone that we call Escolta, the state of Escolta. So, we know that Escolta was one of Manila's old business districts. And the building owners are actually quite organized through the Escolta Commercial Association. So we have here uh, the issue of old heritage buildings on a high value real estate, but they are experiencing challenges, which would be high real estate taxes, as well as high cost of building upkeep. And then of course, during the initial years of the movement to revive Escolta, there was quite an unsupportive local government unit. So for many years after its decline in the late part of the 20th century, Escolta became a typical Manila street. So gone are the days wherein it was a, a booming business district. So it played an important role in our economic history uh, in the end, late part of the Spanish colonial period. So you can see here, this is the late span for early 19th century. Then of course, it will change to become a downtown area during the American period. Okay. Then it, was, it will be severely damaged during the Second World War. But because it still was an important economic area, uh, it got revived after the Second World War. But through time, because and also because of the rise of other business districts and the increase in congestion in Manila streets. As you recall, the streets of Manila were originally designed based on the old Spanish um, plans, wherein the streets were not designed to to were not designed to handle uh, ten wheeler trucks as well as large vehicular traffic. They are only uh, designed to for foot traffic and horses. So it will be it will experience decline. But later on, the Escolta or Escolta as a street would change as a cultural hub, as a a space for or what we call a creative space. Okay, in this sense. Okay, so you will have it will be a house or a location of social enterprises as well as other young creative startups. Uh, and this is before the pandemic. So the community-led efforts for, for revival was uh, deemed quite successful and it became, okay, from what is originally Escolta, a location of big businesses, it transformed into a hub for young startups or startup businesses as well as young creative professionals and would later on evolve from a traditional old business district to a more creative hub or space. Okay. And creative hubs and creative spaces are also related or it's part of the discipline of uh, heritage. Okay. So we have here uh, the importance of creating a consensus between the different stakeholders of heritage. And what is the back or who is the backbone of this heritage or of this uh, community heritage is basically the community. So the community is the backbone of heritage conservation and citizen empowerment includes creating a cultural consensus among its diverse members. Okay, so okay, in any um, heritage conservation project, the core would be, this is from one of, uh, this is from my late mentor, architect Toti Villalon, the core would be, or the core, any heritage conservation to succeed, its core should be collaboration between the different stakeholders of a said heritage. Okay, so other heritage concerns okay, would include, of course, exploitation and commercialization, which could be addressed with community involvement and benefit. Um, infringement of intellectual property rights could be managed with IP protection and just compensation. Okay. So cultural appropriation would include, uh, would be solved by proper consent and proper representation. Um, in, the, in the practice of heritage as well, you have the issue of exclusion and elitism, which could be managed through inclusiveness and dialogue. 
Okay. Then there are the dangers brought about by mass tourism, which could be managed with policies for sustainable tourism. Um, then you have the challenges of climate change and natural disasters, which could be uh, managed with uh, environmental protection as well as heritage protection and heritage first aid programs. Okay, then um, there, conflict among stakeholders, it's long-term relationship building. And the current pressing challenge would be how would the heritage sector be assisted in recovering from this current pandemic? Okay, so that is the current state or the current challenges that the practice of heritage conservation and management here in the Philippines. So to end, uh, let me conclude by saying that the discipline of history plays a crucial role in heritage conservation and that the historian uh, in, the, in the field of conservation uh, includes or should be the one who studies the change of a particular heritage as well as help in interpreting the significance of a said heritage. And in last or lastly, heritage conservation and management in the Philippines is an emerging field for practice. So there. So with that, thank you very much.